Now I wanted to talk to you about pulling a vacuum. We know that when you replace a part, you replace a compressor, you replace a dryer, you have to pull a vacuum. Now, how deep of a vacuum do you want to pull? How long should you pull a vacuum? A lot of guys say, well, you know, I just pull a vacuum for like 20, 30 minutes. Others will say, well, I pull a vacuum for maybe, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Others will say, oh, at least an hour while I go to lunch. Yeah, you can do all those things. But the most important thing to remember is that you have to pull down to 500 microns. You gotta pull down to 500 microns. And how do you know you have pulled down to 500 microns? Well, you have to have a micron gauge. Gotta have a micron gauge in order to know that you have pulled down to 500 microns. Now, it's gonna take a while to get down to 500 microns a lot of times. And that's because, especially if we have flushed the system, we, let's say we had acid in the system and we clean out the lines or we change out a condensing unit and we flush the lines out, that cleaning agent that we use, we're not gonna get it all out. So now we have to pull a vacuum to 500 microns and that may take several hours. I had a student in class that it took him eight hours to pull down to, I think he said it was 300 microns. Once he closed off the gauges, the pressure came back up, but it only came up to 490, I think he said, or 475, and it stopped. It did not go up anymore. So that's a good thing. That tells me that the pressures inside had to equalize, and he does not have a leak, so the pressure came up and it just stayed right there. But how do you know um, that you need to flush the lines out? That's another question. Well, one of the things you might want to do is you may want to test the system. You might want to do an acid test. They have different types. This is just one of them. But what you do is you take a little bit of oil, you mix it with in, in this little bottle, and you shake it. If it changes color, then yes, you have acid in the system. Then you have the, what they call a two second acid test kit. The two second acid test kit, what it does, is you hold it onto the Schrader and as refrigerant comes out and as oil mixes in with it, it changes color. Now, where are you gonna hook this up to? You can hook it up to either the liquid line or the suction line service valve, or if you happen to have a suction line filter dryer that has the two connections here to check the pressure, you can just go ahead and put it in there and you hold it in there so that you depress the Schrader and you're going to hear this psst and you hold it there for two seconds. That's why it's called a two second acid test kit. Take it off and you look at it. If it changes color, then you know that there's acid in the system. If it doesn't, then you know the system's okay. So let's say that you work in a building and let's say you have 10 units, 10 rooftop units. Now you just start in this building, you may be the uh, chief engineer, you may be the lead engineer, I don't know, but you've never been to this building before, you've never worked at this building. So you get 10 of these, because you have 10 rooftop units, and you test each unit. You test each unit and you see that one or two have acid in them, then you can go ahead and treat those units what are you going to treat it with? Well, they have these acid scavengers. They have this stuff called acid away. They have different things that you can just add onto the system and it neutralizes the acid. Once you put that in there, you come back two, three days later, test it again. See if it still has acid in it. You may have to change the dryer. Now, if there's acid in the system and you change the dryer, that's a good idea. Now, what kind of dryer are you going to put in there? What you're going to do is you're going to put what they call an HH dryer in there. The HH dryer will trap the acid. So an HH dryer, that's what you want to use when you have acid in a system. You want to make sure that that's the dryer that you have. And it will be written right on the dryer itself. You're going to see that it says HH. So you take the old dryer out, put the new dryer in. 
test it within a couple of days, two or three days, and see if it has trapped the acid. If it has not, then you may want to change the dryer again. And you keep doing this until you show that you don't have acid in the system anymore. Now my suggestion is if you don't have acid in the system anymore, then you leave it for a month or two, maybe three months, and come back and check it again. Because you want to make sure that it did not come back. You might have had a little bit in there and it just didn't register it. So you want to come back and do all of this. My opinion, once it comes out clear, you would change the dryer again, just to be sure. Just to be sure. So again, you want to do all these tests to see if you have acid in the system. You want to test it with a two second acid test kit. You can test the oil, the compressor oil, to see if there's acid in there. And again, like I said, you can use either some kind of acid scavenger or maybe acid away to neutralize the acid, or you can put an HH dryer in the system. Think about this, and hopefully this helped if you're getting to a new building, if you have a system that has acid in it. Good luck. This is Julio from Aircon Academy. Take a look at my webpage, airconacademy.com, and look me up on YouTube. Thank you.